Hello everybody, and welcome back. Last time, we encountered the mysterious reploid Omega, as well as its creator Dr. Bile, and we also learned that apparently Copy X is back, and the race to capture the Dark Elf has once again begun. This time, we're going to go talk to Servo, get our new weapons, and also take a quick stroll throughout the resistance base. So, let's get to it. Hmm? Oh, it's you, Zero. Did you get your new weapon from Servo? If not, you should go get it soon. Let me know how it works when you do. I can really test its potential in the lab. Alright. Before we talk to Servo, I want to quickly get that disc. Hey, Zero! You're alright. I heard the news. Despite the new energy, the world is still not at peace. I never thought peace would be easy. But still. Anyway, I just finished a new weapon for you. I also fixed your shield boomerang. Here, take it. We got the recoil rod, and of course the shield boomerang. Oh, one more thing. About secret discs. Secret discs contain things that you can decode, right? Well, I can analyze them for you, so stop by anytime. You can also talk to me if you ever want to look at the contents of a disc we've already analyzed. Mr. Zero, please come to the command room immediately. Hmm? Zero, they're asking for you. This recoil rod looks easy to use. Thanks. The world is too much for CL to bear alone. Take good care of her, Zero. Alright, so we've been summoned to the command room, but before we go there, let's check out Seal's room. And look at that, there's Prairie. Uh, I mean, Alouette. Oh, hey, Zero! I've been waiting here the whole time for Seal. She came in and left again right away. This little guy is a bit worn out, so I like it fixed. I guess Seal must be busy. I wonder where my little Kreia and Preya went. They are my precious baby elves. Did you know that I could talk to them? A little? At first it was just me 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 and other baby bubble. Zero, please, let me know if you find them. Promise me, okay? Alright. Before we leave, we can actually check up the computer here. Boot completed. Enter command. Alright, let's see what we can what we know about Omega. Omega is a giant reploid with the same energy signature as the Dark Elf. Some say that Omega was involved in the Elf Wars. The records state that, that a century ago, Omega was ejected into space. There is no other data available on Omega. Right, and we also have some information on Dr. Bile. Dr. Bile used the Dark Elf a century ago, causing the Elf Wars. He was banished from Neo Arcadia. He is a scientist who excels at bringing dead reploids back to life. Alright, and we have one other option, transmission. Can trade battle chips with Mega Man Battle Network 4 Red Sun and Mega Man Battle Network 4 Blue Moon. Send battle chips to Mega Man Zero 3 to change enemies in cyberspace. Begin transmission by selecting battle chips from trade in COM on the pet screen of Mega Man Battle Network 4. Begin transmission. I'd love to say yes, but I can't read. So, since I'm playing this on the virtual console, I can't really link it to another game, let alone another console. So, what that whole thing was about is, one new functionality is that you can actually connect, as we just read, a Mega Man Zero 3 cartridge to either a Blue Moon or Red Sun cartridge. And doing so, you will get a benefit in each game. For Mega Man Zero 3, the enemies which would normally appear once we enter cyberspace, which we haven't seen yet, but I guess we'll just talk about it now, they would change into different ones. They would take the form of the regular viruses that you would fight in the Mega Man Battle Network series. Though, oddly enough, the appearance that they would take is not the same as the viruses that actually appear in Mega Man Battle Network 4. So that's that always struck me as odd. And as for what you will get on your 
Mega One Battle Network cartridge, you would get the C Saber, which is a Mega Chip. So, as I mentioned, I can't really show you that, so I will be posting a link to a video in the description for the YouTuber Shadow Rock CX. He has a bunch of videos, Mega Man related as well, and he made a three minute, I think, video that actually shows you how you would connect and how you get the benefits. So it's a good video and I'll, I recommend that you check it out. So yeah. So now let's head back. Actually, let's talk to Doid one more time. The recoil rod is strongest when charged. It incorporates features from the triple and chain rods. It will require some effort to master. Oh yeah, I completely forgot to show the recoil rod. So the shield boomerang is nothing new. I want to... This is our new one. It doesn't really seem that much, but trust me, it's probably the... Out of the... Out of the triple rod and chain rod, this is my favorite. This is its charge attack, and its best feature by far is that you can do this. You can pogo stick. And I can't really show it to you right now, but blasting enemies across the room is some of the best fun you can get in this, you can have in this game. And it will only become stronger as we obtain a specific EX skill. But we'll talk about that later. So, I know we were summoned to talk to Ciel, but we're going to ignore her for now, and we're going to talk to pretty much everybody else. The lulling attacks from New Arcadia had me optimistic, but it seems they're on the move. I just hope they don't come here. For my job, the quieter things are, the better. We got another disc? Ah yes, if you have some time, do visit old Andrew. Let's see, I think he's on the third floor. Oh, speaking of old Andrew, I just remembered. This disc belongs to old Andrew, but since he's no good with machines, you just go ahead and take it. And we got another disc. Also, I didn't open any of the discs that we obtained for the first stage right now, because we can obtain a couple more right now in the resistance base, so I want to open them all at the same time. And also, something that I never mentioned. Most stages have a total of 10 secret discs, aside from the resistance base, which has a total of 20, and you cannot get all 20 right now, which means we'll be talking to all of the resistance soldiers plenty of times. Ah, Mr. Zero, lately I've been so bored, my trigger finger is itching, but I suppose that's nothing to complain about, right? Oh yes, I can't make out what's on this disc, you can have it. Right, we got this 58. Let's quickly bounce. There we go. We got 106. Come on, there we go. And let's talk to the guy on the other tower. Mr. Zero, before I worked here, I was a security guard in the desert. Of course, that was over a year ago. And no disc. Hey, hey, how's the new guy doing? Oh, pardon me. Can't keep calling the legendary Roid the new guy. It's been so boring since that Alpaiso left here. No one complains when I skip work. And I don't have any stories to tell. There's just no excitement anymore. Did you take the disc lying there? Not yet. That disc is pretty much just my personal profile. Wonder what would possess someone to write about me. It was as accurate as could be, but surely there's something more interesting to write about. Even so, we'll take it. Hey there, Zero! Have you heard? The appearance of Omega, who has the same signature as the Dark Elf, has caused a rift in our world. The rift is called Cyberspace. A mysterious doorway connects it to the real world. Inside Cyberspace, Cyber Elf abilities auto-activate. Let's hear some more about that. Oh yes, about Cyberspace. Want to know more? Sure. Then let me explain. 
Some elves activate when you go into cyberspace, but not all elves do. Only elves with the A mark on the lower left of the icon activate. They activate even when not grown, and they also don't die. There are also no penalties for using elves. But when you enter cyberspace, you lose 5 mission points. Also, in cyberspace, you get no secret discs from foes, and you can't fight bosses while still inside. So that was a whole lot of information regarding how elves work in cyberspace. I'm going to go into more detail about that in a moment, but I want to talk to another resistance member because he also gives some more details about how elves work. But for now, let's talk to old Andrew. What's this? You must be the new whippersnapper. Ha, I'm kidding. Even my memory isn't quite that bad. By the way, son. Where's the young lad with the long blonde hair, who was in the commander's room until just recently? Well, it's nothing really. There was just this thing. So he wanted to talk to El Paiso, and we don't know what about exactly. One more time. Hey, Ciro, when you have a moment, when you listen to my story, can I tell you? A long time ago, I was a teacher at a school. Back then, there were many humans. It is no falsehood to say we lived in harmony together. I have so many good memories of those days. The one I remember most vividly is when we went on a picnic. There was a girl who had forgotten to bring her lunch. And when lunchtime came, she sat alone by herself. All her friends were too busy talking and eating to notice. She had a hard time fitting in. Didn't speak up much. She didn't know how to tell her friends she forgot lunch. When I saw her, I figured that as much was happening. So I gave her some donuts I had made that morning. Oh, bored already? You know, before I taught, I worked at a bread factory. And before that, I was a sailor. Oops, went off track. I was telling you about my giving the girl a donut. She didn't thank me and ran off with her head bowed. I thought she was going off to be with her friends. But on the way home, the girl got off the bus and gave me something. It was a short letter and a piece of clover. The letter said, Mr. Andrew, I'm sorry I didn't find you a four-leaf clover, written in tiny letters. That was her way of saying, thank you. Whenever I passed by the harbor where the school was, I recall the sweet voices of children calling to me, Mr. Andrew. So that was a rather sweet story. So we have the barracks here, similar to Mega Man Zero 2, they are mostly empty, I believe. Yep, though I think there's... yeah, there's someone here. Ah, Mr. Zero, I was just cleaning this room and I came across a secret disc. It must be around somewhere. If you find it, it's yours. Alright. Hiya, Ciro! It's been two months since Mr. Alpaiso left here. I wonder when I'll be promoted to commander. I don't think there is a more qualified successor. If that were impossible, I might be an operator instead. Busy, busy, busy. I think I work the hardest of everyone here at the base. Ciro, when you see everyone, tell them how hard I work. Sure. We got another disc. Okay, and similar to the third floor, I think they're all empty except for this one. Ah, Mr. Zero, good to see you. I'm taking a break after patrolling the second floor, so don't think I'm just slacking off. Yeah, same line of dialogue, nothing new. Nice to meet you, my name is Perro Kid. Oh, it's Mr. Zero. Sorry about that, I have poor vision. But that aside, Miss Seal's research is just incredible. Incomplete as it is, I think that the miracle of undying cyberlops shows the fruit of her labor. 
about Cyberops. Want to know more? Sure. Miss Seal's research, Miss Seal's research says that there are two types of, of elves: fusion elves and satellite elves. There's technically a third type, but I'll let it roll. Fusion elves perish, as it always has been. So yeah, fusion elves are the same as they have worked in the previous two games. For example, when an elf turns in a subtank or destroys some enemy units, then there's the newer type, the satellite elves. These elves can be equipped and removed freely, and they won't perish, but you can only equip two at a time. One each in Satellite 1 and Satellite 2. There is no penalty for using Satellite Elves. Some Fusion Elves can be upgraded into Satellites. So yeah, that's a fairly decent explanation of the Satellite system. Other enough though, the game never mentions the... Doesn't give you a more general intro into Cyber Elves, so I guess I might as well do that right now. So, Cyber Elves are, well, fairy or elf like creatures that can aid you throughout the game. They can be divided in three main categories. First off, we have Nurse Elves. You can tell them apart because of their pink color, and they usually have abilities related to restoring or increasing your max health. And they can do a few other things, such as turning into sub tanks as well. Then we have Animal Elves, you can tell them apart because of their green color, and they tend to have abilities centered around increasing your physical abilities, such as your running speed, your climbing speed, they can also provide assistance in battle by shooting at enemies, they can rescue from falling down pits, among other things. And then finally we have Hacker Elves. They're, I would say, the ones with the most variety when it comes to their skills. You can tell them about it because of their blue color, and they can do a whole bunch of things, from changing your rank to A, boosting your weapon's damage and charging speed, removing small enemies or modify them into even weaker enemies, change your saber combo and slashes, and among other things, increase the effectiveness and drop rate of some items. So yeah, and as we saw, aside from that, elves can be divided into fusion, which is they work the same as they did previously. Satellite, which you can equip, and I'll just show you. So normally, we don't really have any Cyrobes at the moment, because we haven't opened any secret disc. But any Satellite Elf, you will be able to equip it from here. You have your two Satellite slots. Here, in Fusion, you will be able to access any Fusion Elf that is ready to be used. And here in E-Crystals, you can raise uh, your cyber elves, because some cyber elves, usually fusion ones, require you to feed them a specific amount of energy crystals before they can be used. So once they are ready, they will appear either in the fusion or satellite list. Oh, it's you, Zero. I just can't stand work. My job? My job is to watch the harbor all day, all day, every day. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. If that hippo heard me say that, he'd sure be mad. Oh, hey, I found this disc underneath this load. Do you want it? Sure. Well, you're not expecting to get it for free, are you? Let me think. Alright, you can have it if you answer my question. Do you know that small red block down the hall? The one that carries a book with him wherever he goes. Answer me this. What's his name? So it's Perokin. So, you knew. Very well then. Here, take it, as I promised. And we got disc 174. Hello, Mr. Zero. I'm sure you've forgotten my name. I'm Altrush. I've been carrying loads around here for years. Sometimes I wish I could do something else, but there just isn't anything that I'm good at. Sorry, I didn't mean to gripe to you, Mr. Zero. One more disc. I think that's all the discs. Actually, no. I think that's at least one more. Two more. Scratch that. But yeah, for now, let's head back to the commander's room. Sorry this took so long, Zero. Are you ready? We've simulated our options based on the information at hand. I had the results prepared in the form of missions. The first two are missions to prevent New Arcadia from getting the Dark Elf. The other two are guerrilla attacks on New Arcadia 
to protect everyone from its threat. Zero, is fighting our only option? I mean, we developed this new energy. I thought the world would finally be at peace. Do we really have to keep fighting? CL, you're already doing the best you can. And you're not alone. Leave the rest to us. C Zero. Mr. Zero, we're ready. You can leave at any time. Select the mission. Not right now. I actually want to go and talk to Servo one more time. Oh, Zero. Sorry, I couldn't fix you up I couldn't fix up your weapons in time. Since there haven't been any attacks from New Arcadia. I thought I'd just upgrade your weapons instead. But it ended up taking more time than I expected. Sorry about that, but I was able to make some pretty good improvements to your weapons. By the way, about your recoil rod. Do you want to know how to use it? Sure. I see, I see. The recoil rod can blast enemies with a charge, and you can also aim down and shoot to fly up into the air. Certain barriers can only be destroyed with the charge attack, so don't hesitate to give it a try. Doid and I spent a month putting it together for you, so use it well. Of course, the trick with new weapons is to give them a try, and get used to them. I actually want to talk to Servo one more time. I got so caught up in making your weapons, that I worked for 10 days without taking any e-crystals, and almost ended up shutting down. <laughs> oh yes, I have something to give to you. It's no use to me anyway, so have this disc. And we got the Secret Disc 92. Right, so before we finally open up our discs, I want to go over one more detail regarding Cybers. Specifically, the their levels, copies and score deduction. So Cybers can be divided aside from Animal, Hacker and Nurse into levels. Small Cybers, they they usually have a small blue circle right next to them. These are elves that are already ready for use. Then we have medium cyber elves. They have an L1 next to their name and they must be fed energy crystals in order to evolve at least once before they can be used. And then we have rare cyber elves. They have an L2 next to their names and they require to evolve twice before they can be used. Also, occasionally some cyber elves may have a yellow arrow next to their name, which means that they can be fed energy crystals in order to increase the effectiveness of, it, of its abilities. This is not them evolving. Even if you haven't fed them energy crystals when they have the yellow arrow, you can still use them, so keep that in mind. Also, most elves are not unique. They tend to have copies or duplicates. For example, most cyber elves tend to have copies of themselves. Some medium cyber elves have copies, and every single large or rare cyber elf is completely unique. You will never find a level 2 cyber elf. You will never, you'll never have more than one of the same uh, rare cyber elf. And finally, score deduction. So, cyber elves can, can, once you use them, they will give you a score penalty at the end of the next mission, and depending on the Cyber Elf, that score penalty might be higher or lower. Since some Cyber Elf have permanent effects, they also tend to have permanent uh, score deductions, whereas those with temporary effects tend to have temporary score deductions. Also, some Cyber Elves that have permanent score deductions may have a higher deduction on the very next mission and then a smaller one on all subsequent missions. For example, some Cyber Elves can have a 5-point deduction on the very next mission and then a permanent point deduction for, of 2 in every subsequent mission. Keep that in mind because your score deduction on your Elf, uh, on the Elf parameter, can end up in the negatives, meaning that it can affect your score a lot. And it's entirely possible to put yourself in a position in which you cannot get an A or S rank. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, in order to explain that, we need to go over the ranking. So at the end of every mission, you're giving a total score, and depending on that number, you, can get, you get a rank from S to F, S being the highest. You also get a code name. Code names are divided in two types. There are, there are 
there are unique code names and code names that have two halves. The first, the code names that have two halves, usually are related to one of your mission parameters, being the mission score, clear time, the damage score, and the second one is related to your to what weapon you have been prioritizing throughout your throughout the level. And finally, we have unique codes. They are they are related to a few specific parameters, such as collecting all data disks, taking, having a specific elf score, collecting all elves, breeding them all, or being able to maintain a steady S rank all throughout the game. For this specific let's play, we're going to be focusing on that last part. In previous game uh, let's plays of the Mega Man Zero series, I managed to keep a steady A rank. For this one, I'm going to see if I can do better. So. We're going to see if we can take that S rank right there up to the very end of the game. So, finally, before we end things up here, I want to take a quick look at the result screen. We saw this last time, but I didn't go into more detail about it. So, there are six parameters that go into your score. First off, we have mission. So, most missions don't really have a specific objective, meaning that you will get a, a total of 20 points simply for completing it. But, there are specific missions that have an extra objective, and if you don't complete that, even if you get to the end and take out the boss, you may end up with a score of 0. Then we have clear time. Every single mission has a specific amount of time under which you can get 20 points. Then we have enemy. Similar to clear time, every single mission has a specific amount of enemies that you need to defeat in order to get all 15 points. Then we have damage. Damage can be rather tricky. You don't have to you don't need to go through the entire stage without taking any damage at all in order to get all 15 points. The game isn't that mean. It allows you to get a specific amount of damage before it actually deducts from your score. In this case, in Mega Man Zero 3 you can get you can take up to 6 points of damage before it actually affects your score. If you're wondering how much that is, I'll just show you right now on screen. So, yeah, once you take 7, actually it's not 6, it's 7 points of damage. Once you take your 7th point of damage in Mega Man Zero 3, you lose 1 point in your damage score. And then you lose another point any after taking 6 more points of damage. Then we have retry. Pretty self-explanatory. Once you die, you lose 3 points from your retry score. And then elf. I already went over it, so not much else to say there. Alright. So, I realized that I completely skipped out on checking the secret discs. Sorry about that. File A. The beast-like Mutos Reploids defend the human race. So yeah, mo all of the Reploids that we have been fighting from Mega Man Zero 1 to now, they are called Mutos Reploids. And we got a Cyberelf, Sylphie. So every single time that we obtain a new Cyberelf, especially if it's completely unique, I will show its information on the left side on the screen, such as the amount of duplicates that it may have and whether or not it can be used as fusion satellite and how many e crystals it requires, as well as the point deduction that you get from using it. We got Silif and Maya and b -Nip. and Ashun. This is actually a rather interesting one. This one will change your score to A, and it is quite useful if you want to make sure that you get all EX skills. And we also get some E-Crystals. So aside from Elves and data, data files, you can also get E-Crystals. And you can also get data files on specific characters, in this case Omega. This Reploid has a the signature of Dark Elf. Small mistake there, but that's okay. And you can also get data files on small enemies. CL. Researchers specializing in energy. Really? That's all you can think of to say about CL? How about creator of copy X? Leader of the resistance? No? Okay. Rosinold helps with wounded reploids. Menard, a mischief maker who plays hooky. Alouette treasures a dull CL game. 
Angle, Servo, Parrocket, and Outrush. And finally, Pick. Alright, well, that's all the discs for now. Alright. And I guess one final bit of information I didn't mention, specifically about the operators actually. Because I don't know if you actually get a data file from them, you might. But they actually have names. The, na the game never tells you, but they do have a name. The blonde one is called Jean, and the the one with brown hair is called Rouge, I believe. So, yeah. Right, so I think that's more than enough for now. Next time, we'll take on our first mission and see if we can actually capture the Dark Elf. See you guys then.